When we start creating web pages, it's best practices to use the new advances in HTML5 that really let us set up the page with a semantic structure. That means that we're not just using breakdowns of the page or div tags, which is what we've used to use for page formatting. We still do that, but the different sections have specific names and additional features we can add to them to make them more usable and to describe and organize the content. And this makes it better for search engine optimization, which is important. Search optimiza engine optimization is helping you your page rise to the top of search engine results like Google. And it's also important for accessibility, which is the right thing to do as well as required legally for many sites. So your basic HTML page needs to have these items in it. Um, the first line is declaring that it's an HTML5 document. The second tag declares that we are creating an HTML document with the language of English. And then we have our head section. And this is an error I see a lot in new people who are coding. They don't understand that your head section has to close before your body section starts. This is a comment. This is something that is just there informationally to help you when you go back to maintain your site. Notes to yourself, be careful what you put here because they are visible to the public if they right click on a page and choose view source. So in the head section, you should declare your character set, which in the United States is just gonna be UTF-8. And then you should have a title for your page. And the title should be unique on every page of your site. Again, that helps with search engine optimization, which is important and you wanna start building your site from the ground up, paying attention to things that are going to make your site more search engine friendly, rather than try to go back after you've created your site and, then, and add search engine optimi optimization at the end. So one of the basic things is to have a descriptive title unique for each page. Then you have your body tag, which contains the main content that's visible to the public, and then you close your HTML document. So you should or could create a basic template like this. This is pretty similar to the template you'd get using Dreamweaver, except in Dreamweaver you'd add the language equals English. Other than that, this is pretty much what Dreamweaver would create for you for a blank document. Now, using semantic markup, it gives us the structure plus the structure, what we work with, um, plus headings create an outline. Now I have an untitled section in here because I have a section that is just there for formatting purposes. So it doesn't show up in the outline. But this is an HTML5 outliner application that outlines how the my site is set up. So if we were to go look at the link, and I'll just go there, that's this page. If you go look at the link, this page is set up with HTML. It has no styles applied to it yet. So that outliner represents this. And what I have here is you'll notice I have an H1 tag for Bouvier's, otherwise known as the Dirty Beards. And this is in my header section. I have navigation. I have a heading one for Bouvier de Flanders, heading two for appearance with paragraphs underneath it, temperament and history. Now if we view the source code, which I have some tools added to Firefox so I can choose view source here. If you haven't added those, you can right click and choose view page source. This is what the code for this page looks like. And it's broken down into various components that put together the building blocks of the page. And they start with the header, not to be confused with the head. The head is information about the page. The header serves as the masthead for the page. And that is right here, it's Bouvier plus the navigation, which is often nested in your header, is part of my header. Then I have an article. Now an article is co page content that is eligible to be replicated or syndicated. And in there I have different sections, and sections basically are just like chapters, they're different parts of that content. And then I have an aside down here, which is just information that is tangentially related. In other words, it's an offshoot. It's vaguely related to what I'm talking about, but it would, it, the main content would stand on its own without it.
So the basic page constructs in HTML5 are the header, nav, which is navigation, article, which is something that could be syndicated, section, which is kind of generic, it's usually used for like chapters, and a side, something that's tangentially related to the main content, and a footer, which generally contains information about the content. Now they can all be used for formatting purposes, but they it provides their by using these instead of generic div tag, which is the old HTML way to do it, and it still exists, and you'll still use it, but it's very generic and it doesn't really tell you what the function of that part of the page is. So those are your basic page constructs. So let's look at them each individually. We have the header, and as you saw on the page, that is the masthead, and inside of it, it has my navigation nested. And it should be typically it's a is a page header or you can have a separate section header. So you could have a section header in an aside in an article that could have its own header inside of it. Now articles should make sense independent of the page. In other words, they could be syndicated, copied, and brought into another page, and they should still make perfect sense. Sections are more generic, and they can you can nest sections inside of articles, and they serve the function of chapter divisions. So this is my code where you can see that I have the article role equals main. That's a usability feature just saying that this is the main content of the page. And then I have different sections in here, each with their own um, H2 heading because it's they're of sub-importance because this is really how it's outlined. It's an article on Bouvier de Flanders, which is a breed of dogs. And then the sections have different sub-information, appearance, temperament, history. So they should be H2. The headings, H1, H2, through H6, designate the importance, and they really serve the function of outlining the page. So you'll typically have a, at least one H1 heading. You can have more than one. H2, you may not go all the way to H6. I'm usually with H1s, H2s, and H3s. And you can see that my sections in here are subdividing my article into sections or chapters. And aside, contains information that's tangentially related to the main content. So the role here is complementary, and this is again a usability feature that's being introduced with HTML5, the role. And so this is information about my personal bouvets, which is related to the main content, but is not essential to it. And then I have a footer, which is just content information, that's its role, and small here, it's not supposed to be smaller font, though it is, these tags, because they're semantic, mean something. And small, small actually refers to the fine print, which is basically just a copyright by me for 2014. And then I have a generic div tag. This is a holdover from the older versions of HTML. It's been used as a layout tool where you can section the page and position the divs. And you'll see that I have one on this page because we're going to take this page and later you're going to create a similar page. Later we're going to apply cascading style sheets to it. And so I have a div with the ID of container that would hold all of my other sections together, let me format them and center them in the page. Area. This is the Accessible Rich Internet Applications Suite. This is by the World Wide Web Consortium. You can see the link here. Right? The quote is from their page. It explains what it's for. and it defines a way to make web content and web applications more accessible to people with disabilities. It especially helps with the dynamic content and advanced user interface controls developed with AJAX, HTML, JavaScript, and related technologies. And where you're seeing me use this is where it's the role equals, that's telling screen readers what function each section is playing in my page. And we'll come back to that continuously throughout this course because it is important to make accessible pages. And it helps you because accessible pages work better for search engine optimization. Plus, if you have a site that receives any government funding or is of a certain size, you're required to be compliant. And it's the right thing you, to do. You should just get in the habit of making your web pages compliant for people with disabilities. You'll also see that I'm using IDs in the page. Now, classes and IDs are typically used as names for styles that we can apply when we get into the cascading style sheet. So it allows us to format specific areas. So you can have a class 
that you can use it over and over again. So if you have important text that you want to highlight and you want to make it a certain color and you want to make it italicized, you can do all that formatting and you can use it anywhere you have important text. That would be a class. An ID can have styling applied to it as well, but IDs are also used with JavaScript or they're used as anchors inside the page. So here we have an anchor ID equals history. We have an on-page link that will link to that ID. So it gives you a specific item in the page that you can style, that you can apply JavaScript to, or that you can link to. And that's why there can only be one ID on any page because you don't want to apply those things to two different places. If it's a link, it needs to go to something unique. So you'd name it using an ID. Title. The big thing here is that there are two titles in HTML. There's the title in the head section that isn't really visible to people that contains the meta information about your page. It's the information describing the page. And then there's the title tag, which really provides a tool tip. So if you hover over an image and the image has a title, whatever you type in the, the title will pop up on screen so you can see where the picture was taken, who it's copyrighted by, who the photographer is, what infor whatever information you choose to put in there. And then comments are in, they're in code developer notes and they start with a triangular bracket, an exclamation point and two dashes. They end with the two dashes in the bracket, close and triangular bracket, and your comments go between these tags. Be careful when you're putting things in comment, while they're not visible on the page, anybody who right clicks can view and see your comments. So you don't want to put anything there that you don't want the general public to read. It just won't apply in your page. Generally, they're developer notes, things like where the content should go or how you're setting up where the containers often I will include comments about what my closing tags are for. They're usually referring to the code to help you program it better. So those are the basic structures in HTML5 and it's really improved a lot from previous versions of HTML because it really helps you provide a semantic structure to your page that helps describe the content of each area of the page.